and welcome to one of my favorite videos I love to film every single year. Coming up with these top 10s every year is just so much fun for me and this video is my top 10 books of 2017 and I read a lot of good books this month. I also read a lot of books. My goal was to read 50 books this year and I ended up reading 60. That's more than one book a week, so I'm very impressed with myself, very proud of myself, pat on the back. And so a lot of those were actually really good books, so it was kind of hard to narrow it down to just 10. All of these books that I have are based off of the books that I read in 2017. That doesn't necessarily mean that all these books came out in 2017. It's just based off of what I've read. And I will put a list down below of all every single book I read this year so you know what I'm basing it off of. And as you can see I have a totally different background. I decided because this is a video about books I wanted to film it in front of my bookshelves. So let's just get started with um, some honorable mentions because I couldn't choose just 10. There were still a few others I wanted to just mention to you guys. So these are the honorable mentions. Big Mushy Happy Lump by Sarah Anderson. City of Heavenly Fire, the sixth and final book in the Mortal Instruments series by Cassandra Clare. Saga, Volume 1 and Volume 2 by Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples. Okay, now we're moving on to number 10. Number 10, I have We're Still Right, They're Still Wrong by James Carville. This is an interesting one to put on my top books of the year list just because this is not a typical book I usually read. I do not read political books, but this year I kind of went through a phase where I read a lot of political books because I was really getting into politics, but this one was by far my favorite of those and it did explain politics in a way that I could understand and it also was hilarious and very witty. So this book is basically just using facts to argue why the Democrats are on the right side of history while Republicans are not. And they're talking about a bunch of different categories like healthcare reform, climate change, income inequality, just everything under the sun that you can think of. But I just really loved his witty, humorous style of writing for this book because it definitely made it very engaging and very easy for me to understand, <laughs> which is why I really enjoyed it a lot. But if you are a Trump supporter, do not read this book because it definitely bashes Trump a bunch of times. Which is why I loved it, by the way. For the number nine spot, I have Paper Princess by Aaron Watt. In this number nine spot, I'm also going to include the other two books in the series, um, Broken Prince and Twisted Palace, just because I absolutely love this series as a whole. I am not including Fallen Air because I actually did not really like that book as much, but this whole series as a whole is just so yummy and delicious is the best way I think I can describe it. This series is just a, I'm going to say new adult romance series. I'm not going to say it's young adult just because it seems way too sexy for young adults. So this is a new adult romance series about Ella Harper who is a teen who is living on her own in poverty so she becomes a stripper to kind of make ends meet, but then uh, this guy comes along who says he's her guardian and he kind of takes her in and he's a billionaire, like he's super wealthy and he has five sons, four of which are going to the same school as her and they all hate her and try to make her life a living hell. But there is a steamy hot sexy romance in this book series as well, which is very hot and steamy. I just love that Ella Harper is such a strong female character. She's very smart, she's a survivor, she is very strong, not just physically. She's like so able to take care of herself too, which I absolutely love, that female empowerment going on. But this is by no means any work of like literary genius. It's just a kind of reminiscent of like a soap opera to me because there's tons of drama going on as well. Every single book ends with a cliffhanger that just these are some of the best cliffhangers I have ever read too. It's just a book series that is entertaining and sexy as hell and I love it so much. Number eight I have Summer Days and Summer Nights 
Uh, this is a collection of 12 short stories written by 12 different authors, and I loved this collection of short stories. It was so cute and romantic and just, oh, I loved it so much. All these stories have to do with love in the summertime. That's kind of the theme with this book, but this was just such a great collection. Uh, there wasn't a single story in here that I didn't like. I pretty much loved every single one of them, but this book is a lot of stuff. It's very cutesy, it's creative, it's fun, it's sad, it's diverse, it ha it tackles a lot of important issues, so don't let this like cutesy cover deceive you. It does tackle a lot of important issues like the LGBT community and mental health and autism and there's just a lot of stuff going on in here, so don't let this cover deceive you. It is just a phenomenal collection of stories. Number seven on my list is Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli. This book was recommended to me by a friend of mine, but it had already kind of been in my mind before then, and it was just her that kind of gave me that push to finally read it. This book is also becoming a movie this year very soon, and I cannot wait for it. I was surprised at how much I actually did love it. I know it got a lot of hype, and I was so nervous that the hype was going to ruin the book for me, but it did not. It lived up to the hype, and I'm so glad it did. But this is a story about a boy named Simon who is not out of the closet yet, but he does have this like online pen pal romance going on with someone who he doesn't know. He, like he doesn't know who it is, but he does know it's someone at a school. And he ends up getting blackmailed by a classmate who finds those emails and he kind of just has to play along with the blackmailer to do what he can or else his secret is out to the whole world. And he's not ready for that yet. But it's just a really cute story about him coming to terms with who he is, and it's also got a really cute romance in it. I just, it, it was just one of those books that just makes you feel so good. And I just love the character of Simon too. He was so well developed. He was just really relatable and really grounded, and I just, I loved him and hearing from his perspective so much throughout this story. But it's not just about romance, it's also about family and friendship and just everything about life. I love this so much, it just leaves me with a huge, huge smile on my face <laughs> every time I think about it. So definitely go check this one out, especially because the movie's coming out, check this out soon, like really, really soon. <laughs> Number six on my spot is another book that was recommended to me by that same friend that recommended Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda, and that book is Don't Worry, It Gets Worse by Alita Nugent. This is also a super short book that I was able to fly through super quickly because not only was it short, but it was just so funny, I wanted to finish it ASAP. First of all, this book just has the greatest title I have ever read. I mean, Don't Worry, It Gets Worse. I love that title. This is also just such a hilarious, hilarious book. I was laughing out loud through most of this book. So this is a nonfiction book about Alita's adventures in adulthood, like right out of college. But I would definitely recommend this to anyone who is in college, wanting to know what the real world is like as soon as you get out of it. My favorite section of this book, I actually highlighted like a lot of it, um, but it's her graduation speech that she wishes she could give. It's so honest and so funny at the same time. I love that she's able to explain new adulthood in such a honest yet super hilarious way. Like it has a lot of heart and a lot of wit, but is also very sarcastic at the same time. Even if you aren't in college, um, just any millennial in general, I feel like would love this book. Or even if you're a fan of the TV show Girls, I think you would like this book too. This also isn't a book that's just for people in college or for millennials because I do think millennials and college people would get the most out of it, but I did loan this out to a friend of mine at work who is in her 60s and she absolutely loved this book too and she like recommended it to her daughter and I just, it's a book that's for everyone. In the number five spot, I have 
Note to Self by Connor Franta. I have mentioned this before this year, but I just want to say it again, this cover. Oh my god, this cover is like one of the most beautiful covers I have ever seen. Even like the inside. Oh, it's just... And the spine, like, it's just so beautiful. But the inside is super beautiful as well. If you don't know Connor Franta, Connor Franta is a YouTuber. And he came out with a book two years ago, I believe. But it was called A Work in Progress. And it was just kind of like a memoir about his life. But this book definitely went a lot deeper. And it went to a more vulnerable place. It kind of read like it was a diary, which I really loved. It got very emotional and just very impactful as well. He talks about his dealing with depression and anxiety. He talked about self-love and self-hate. He talked about coming out of the closet and he just, I like I said, he just really went to a vulnerable place. It just made this book so beautiful and heartbreaking at the same time but also putting it back together and I just I <sighs> there's also some really great poems in this book and the pictures are just so amazing they're just absolutely stunning and they kind of help lighten up the darker topics in this book this is definitely a book that I will be reading over and over and over again I just love it so much We're getting closer and closer to number one. But uh, number four here, I have In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. This book, oh, it's funny. I only wanted to read this book because of two reasons. Number one, Cole Sprouse read this book while on set of the show Riverdale. His character also talks about this book in the show for a little bit. So I was definitely like, okay, I'll read it. But also it kind of has a lot of Riverdale feels inside of the book, so that's another reason why I wanted to read it. But it was just so much more than that. Oh my god. This book is like a true crime thriller type book. It's about the death of the Clutter family in Kansas of like 1950s. And we're solving the murder through a bunch of different people, through the Clutters themselves, through like the investigators, the lawyers, the, the townspeople, and even the murderers themselves. I just really truly love that because it just helped us reveal different things at different points and it helped us see all sides of the story. But this book was just so intense and intriguing and gripping and I just oh it was so well written I definitely see why people are considering it like a modern classic and it was just absolutely incredible so really highly recommend this book at the number three spot I have turtles all the way down by John Green John Green is one of my auto-buy authors, so anytime he writes a book, no matter what, I'm automatically buying it. And this is, I think, his best book by far. This is a story about a girl who is dealing with anxiety and OCD, and she has recently connected with an old friend because his billionaire dad has disappeared and she's trying to solve what happened to him. But in that, there's this, like, cute, very realistic... Uh, romance that happens. It's not like your typical YA romance, which I truly love. It definitely felt more realistic. Reading from the perspective of someone with OCD like and anxiety too just really opened my eyes and I'd never read a book like that before and it's just it definitely made me see a different perspective which I absolutely loved. This book too, you, you feel like you're following like two different storylines and you feel like you're mainly following the one but then it ends up becoming uh, all about the other storyline. I really did love this book and this book too I think only took me three days to read which is very fast for me because I am a slow reader. And the ending of this book too I just it broke me a little but it was definitely needed. I don't want to give away the ending but it was just a really great ending. It was the perfect ending for this book and I, yeah, no, this was just a phenomenal, phenomenal book. Good job, John Green. Thank you so much for finally coming out with a new book. I've missed your writing so much. 
Now books in the one and two spot were really difficult to choose because I wanted to put both of them at number one and it was really hard to choose which one would actually take the number one spot. Just keep in mind, I would love for this to share the number one spot, but I have put it at number two and that is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. This was a book I was very hesitant to read this year. I almost didn't read it um, just because it does deal with a very heavy topic. It's based off of the Black Lives Matter movement. So we follow this girl star who is a witness to the fatal shooting of her friend Khalil by a white cop and it ends up becoming national news because her friend was shot for no apparent reason. But she is also just dealing with herself and her life because she mainly lives in a predominantly black poor community but she does go to a predominantly white prep school and so she's like two different people at both places and she is just trying to find I think the balance between both of her personalities the person she is when she's around white people and the person she is when she's around her family and her community and it's it's I mean it's a so much more than that too because this book really deals with racism and police brutality and just a lot of issues but I think mainly overall this is just a book about standing up for yourself and what you believe is right. I just love Star's voice in this novel. It's just so genuine and so strong and powerful too. Like she is a great female character and I just absolutely love her character and her parents too. Like the whole family dynamic in this book is the best I've ever read in a YA contemporary novel. Every relationship in this book was so well constructed and so well thought out. But I'm so happy I read this book. This book definitely makes readers believe that they have a voice and they can make a change and make a difference if they just speak up and use their voice and I definitely think this is one of the most important reads of the year and also this book is becoming a movie in 2018 as well and I cannot wait for that movie to come out. I think it's coming out later this year not super soon but I just ugh, read this. <laughs> And now, number one, we're finally here. Let me just show you. So, the book is Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo. I am also including Crooked Kingdoms just because the whole series as a whole is just <sighs> phenomenal. Leigh Bardugo has quickly, quickly become one of my all-time favorite authors. Uh, uh, this is the first year I've ever read anything by her, and this is the first book I read by her, and yeah, no, she's definitely a favorite author. But this is a very high urban fantasy series about, um, a heist. Like, the best way I can describe this is, like, it's Ocean's Eleven meets 19th century Russia, but, um, much darker, and of course with teenagers, because it is YA. It's just such a journey, such an adventure, so much action. There's also a really cool magic system. It has really great world building. I have never read a book that had such great world building. I really felt like I was truly in that world. But it's just about this impossible heist that these teens from like a gang have to pull off and it's just so fun and so high energy and the characters are so great. I will say the main thing I look for in books is character development, character arcs, and this one truly had a lot of great character development. The main character Kaz is just so conniving and intimidating and he's got like a secret past and you just, even though he's like a bad guy, you fall in love with him immediately. You also have um Inej, who is just a freaking badass, like I want to be Inej so bad. And then there's Wylan and Jesper, which kind of bring in the humor to the story. And then Mateus and Nina are just relationship goals. This book also just made me feel all of the emotions, like all of the emotions. And I, ugh, I just really love this journey. I definitely thought the use of third person in this story was just absolutely 
genius because it helped bring out a lot more to the story and I think really helped flesh out a lot of the characters and help create that amazing character development that we had. It was just extremely effective and kept us surprised a lot of the times. But this book was just absolutely perfect and I absolutely love it and please go read the second one too because the second one is just as good as the first one and it's just... <sighs> please go read this series right now. Now. Alright, so those are my top 10 books of 2017. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please go check out my other top 10s. I have my top 10 movies and my top 10 TV shows of the year. So go check those out and I will see you guys later with another video. Bye!